Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today in the 36th edition of our CVC Insider Series. My name is Omaira, and I'm part of the 500 Global, one of the world's most active seed stage investment firms. Having backed over 2,500 exceptional startups in 77 different countries, it's been an amazing ride. Within 500, we work closely with corporate investors and innovators. About a year and a half ago, we launched the CVC Insider Series to continue raising the bar of our corporate venturing community. Every two weeks, we host this roundtable featuring a top corporate venturing practitioner or expert in the matter and sharing their unique journey into the industry and best practices they've developed throughout their careers. This week, we have the pleasure to feature Dong Soo Kim, CEO at LG Technology Ventures. Our fabulous host, Nicolas Silvage, will be moderating the, today's discussion, but there is also a Q&A function. Please, please feel free to ask questions along the way, and we'll do our best to cover them. We hope you enjoy, enjoy today's session. Stay safe and come back to the next edition. Nicolas, over to you. Thank you, Mira, and thank you, 500 Global. It's really uh, an important initiative in our ecosystem and in our industry for everyone thinking about going into corporate venturing or already in corporate venturing to learn from the best. And today is one of the best. Uh, Dong Su, I met uh, very early, actually, even before TDK Ventures started. So I can tell you that uh, his uh, help and wisdom uh, probably contributed to uh, where we are today. So Dong Su, if you don't mind uh, maybe sharing five, 10 minutes about your journey uh, into corporate venturing. Sure. That's, uh... Very generous introduction. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it's a uh, it's a little bit of a long story into my journey into corporate venture because it wasn't a, a sudden entry. It was more gradual. Uh, so uh, you know, all along since uh, when I was in school, I was had uh, you know two passions uh, in terms of my career. One was technology and science, and the other one was business. Uh, uh, unfortunately, when you are when you are in school, you have to choose one or, one or the other. There isn't a a good program that 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 uh, you know connects those two. So I uh, I started in 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 on the, the engineering side. So I did uh, you know, get a PhD in uh, in electrical engineering. I was uh, studying mostly on, on on compound semiconductor devices. So I'm a little bit of a physicist and 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 uh, device engineer. So, uh, 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 and, and even during grad school, I always thought, mm, maybe I should just get a master's and get a, you know, or an MBA and get an MBA and then, you know, just get into more business side of things. But, but I was pretty good at what I was doing in terms of the R&D and, and engineering. So I just continued on uh, and ended up getting my PhD. And, and uh, my first job was with Samsung Electronics. I was uh, doing R&D on the uh, on on the fiber optic component uh, uh, business, uh, uh, so uh, so even at that time, I kind of volunteered right toward doing more, uh, you know, helping the business uh, business guys with you know with uh, the technical sales and things like that, uh, which I, I I did enjoy. Um, but uh, what really uh, transformed my career was uh, in 2001 when uh, when the whole fiber optic market crashed. Uh, Samsung decided to exit that business, and at that time, I had an option of to to change my career. Uh, so, uh, you know, I could have stayed as a as a uh, in R and D and become R and D engineer in LCDs or displays or whatever. But I said no. I I, I want to try my hand on on the business side of things. I, uh, I joined a, a technology alliance team where my mission was to try to find uh, R&D partners uh, in, in, uh, in universities and R&D centers, and both, but also startups. And that's when I first got connected with a corporate venture capital team, uh, which uh, the work looked very interesting. And that's exactly what I felt like something that I wanted to do all along. Uh, it did take a, a, a couple of years of convincing the, the head of the venture team to take me on, but he eventually did, fortunately. And then uh, uh, he took a, quite a bit of risk because everybody else in the team had some, you know, business background, but I was the only guy who had just technology background. So, uh, but he did send me to a crash, you know, six week MBA course. And then I learned a lot on the job. Uh, so, uh, so this was actually in 2005 that I, 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 put my, uh, you know, stepped into the, the corporate venture capital world. So that's uh, 
that was my gradual journey, I guess, uh, toward this uh, this industry. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Would you say that you are making the same bet as he did, where you take people who don't have the full package of skill set? Uh, I do, yes. Um, uh, you know, it's really hard to, as you know, as you can imagine, find uh, people who have both investment experience and technology experience, right? And 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 those people, even if you find that it's in such high demand that they all, you know, uh, you have to really compete against other CBC firms. So, you know, we hired quite a bit of uh, 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 of you know people with. Right now, so far, we had we tend to skew more on people who have more investment background with some engineering education, right? Uh, uh, and then train them on the on the investment uh, uh, aspects, uh, but and also have one person who has a PhD uh, in, in my team who who is has more of, of technology background, which now I'm training him on the on the on the on the business side of things. So uh, so that's uh, 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 yeah, we are open to uh, the short answer is yes, we are open to uh, just finding people and, and training them so they can have more complete skill set in this business. Very nice. And you mentioned you have someone with a PhD, you have your own PhD. Yeah. The view I have of PhD is that it's some people who have committed years of their lives to go very, very deep, which, yeah. which means patience, but also uh -huh. deep research. Mm -hmm. Do you think this helps you to be a better investor or there are some maybe caveats to it? So there's definitely like anything in the world, there's the, the positive side and the negative side, right? Uh, and also depends on what kind of PhD you got. I mean, fortunately, uh, I was, uh, again, my undergraduate degree was in applied physics, you know, and, and I had, you know, it was my uh, PhD was very uh, the closer to the, on the physics side, which provides a, a very good fundamental to learn uh, a new technologies, right? Uh, uh, so, you know, so although I was device to physics by training, but I was, you know, I could invest in companies and for example, doing LIDARs or, or equipment or materials and, and so forth, right? Uh, and so that was good. Uh, so again, I mean, if you want a science training, it's always good to have, it's important to have a good grasp of the fundamentals. Uh, the negative side of, of coming from the technology side is uh, when you try to evaluate investment, you tend to focus too much on the technology. So, uh, you know, I learned through the years that, yeah, technology is just one piece of, of the puzzle or one leg of the of the of the stool right uh there are other aspects that that are equally if not more important for business to succeed so uh so you you you, you so you shouldn't just invest in a company just based on the technology right so that's uh uh but you know you you, you as as you gain experience you learn those things right so <laughs> i like the analogy of a, a leg of a stool because if you yeah. miss a leg yeah it, you will fall yeah, but, uh -huh. but it's not the only thing you need to look at. Exactly. If you were to say everyone has different bias about what they look into startups and, and mm -hmm. what they really check out for. I'm, for mm -hmm. example, always looking at unit economics. Mm -hmm. what, what's your top three that you always look for and that maybe is your kind of signature checks? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so top three, I would say is one is, is a team, of course, right? I mean, you have to have very determined and, and, uh, and also passionate people, right? Who wants to make it succeed that, that makes uh, the, all the difference actually, right? Uh, uh, and then the second uh, uh, part is obviously uh, what I would call uh, uh, barrier to entry for your competitor. So it can be the technology or business model or unique positioning in the market, or something that will make you uh, unique and, 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 and succeed uh, when you're competing against others. Uh, the third, which I think is very often uh, overlooked at, is, uh, is the investor base. You want to uh, co-invest with, with good investors because uh, for multiple reasons, right? One is they continue to provide capital and support the company when you yeah. know, when things are going tough, but also uh, uh, good people, uh, uh, for example, on the board, uh, investors on the board, they do add a lot of value in terms of coaching the CEO and providing resources and making connections and all that. So uh, that's, uh, I would say, the top three things that, that, that I, I care for the most. So I think the uh, last one you mentioned is... Mm -hmm so important but not intuitive but when yeah. you explain it it makes sense but mm -hmm. if you think about your investment it's not like you invest just 
in the company and yeah. that's it. Yeah. Yeah. You actually yeah. want yeah. the company to be very successful exactly. and you need the right partners. Yep. Um, just to give me a feel uh, today, do you lead most of the time? Do you follow most of the time? Uh, we are flexible. Uh, uh, I would say uh, we follow a bit more than lead because uh, uh, um, because we do like to co-invest with with other top tier uh, uh, venture capital firms, right? Uh, and also those CVCs. But uh, but most VCs, you know, they like to lead, which means we follow, right? But there are other cases where we think this is very unique that, that we want to lead, and, and in that case, we we do lead all around and and. And when we do that, we also sit on the board of the companies. Yeah. I think your, your answer already gives a good feel that you're looking at partnership. It's not yes. about ego. It's about yeah. what makes yeah. sense for the yeah. startup. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't stress that enough that it's really uh, investing. It's venture capital investing is, is all about just uh, uh, building uh, a, a strong partnership for, for many, many years to come, right? Uh, as an investor, you have to have you should really have be passionate about your portfolio companies and, and try to help them out in any ways you can. Uh, and, 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 and then you want to co-invest with people like that. So uh, uh, for, for startup founders out there, that's more important than, than any valuation or, or how big of a check they are willing to write. I mean, if, uh, so at least, at least in my opinion. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, so you mentioned in and, and because you talk about partnership, I want to go back to what you said about 2001, where yeah. you joined in a role which was about building partnership, university, yeah. Yeah. startups. Yeah. yeah. How much of that experience is is now how you think about engaging mm -hmm. with entrepreneurs? Yeah. So as a CVC, actually, right, uh, that that really helps me understand uh, my counterpart in the corporate side, right? Because I was there, right? So, I mean, most people who just have, you know, who don't have big company background, they say, uh, and, and become investment, uh, and become part of the CVC investment team, they say, oh, they send a good deal and they, they're frustrated. Why this, isn't this getting any attention or why, why aren't they approving this deal? Uh, having been on the other side, I understand the dynamics and, and the thinking that goes through when the corporate side when they receive a deal and 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 and, and whether you know uh so that also helps me to to overcome those uh i guess uh barriers that there might be to to convince them why this deal should be done so it did make me a more of a complete uh, corporate venture capital uh, investor by just the, the virtue of having experienced the other side i think that's it's always important to uh, experience both sides i think you, you know, it's like just like any business, you want to experience both sales and, you know, and, and the buy side and, and which gives you perspective on both sides. So which which is very helpful. In a way, you become the translator between the two sides. Yes, yes, yes. Again, I think I was quite successful in my career as a CVC uh, uh, because uh, because of those those things. So I understood both uh, uh, the, the, the corporate side, but also the investment side I also uh, experienced the, the big company culture and the and the startup culture. I also experienced the, the the Korean culture versus the Silicon Valley culture, and 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 so having you know experienced the the, the both sides on, on all those things uh, really helped me uh, through my career. Very nice. And if I remember, you graduated in California, mm -hmm. but did you go back to Korea at some point for Samsung or LG, or it was always yeah. in the US? So, yeah, so I did go back and forth. So, again, that where it comes in, I experienced both Korean culture and, and, and California. So, I did uh, uh, actually, uh, my undergrad was in California. I did it at Caltech and then PhD was uh, East Coast and at Princeton. But uh, but after that, when I joined Samsung Electronics, I, I, I went back to Korea uh, I see. Uh, and lived there for about 13 years before coming. Uh, so, I did start out my corporate venture capital career in Korea. Uh, but uh, But I made a decision to, I mean, if, you know, you, you have to be at the center of the venture capital world, you have to come to Silicon Valley. So made a decision to come out here late uh, 09. Yeah, so I've already been here. Wow. Already 12 years. That's, that's incredible. So uh, more than 12 years. So uh, yeah. So that's, yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So when you started, you started in a big company. I mean, mm -hmm. clearly it became even bigger since. 
Yeah. But, but Samsung is well known to be a great company and mm -hmm. very structured, which actually yeah. I think gives a really good way for a new graduate to yeah. really learn to do. A yes, job. yes. How much of that was helpful for you in understanding big corporates? Yeah. LG is also yeah. a big company. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and find a way to make them agile enough to help entrepreneurs. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, my experience at Samsung was quite unique because Samsung was already big, but I also experienced during the late 90s and, and year 2000s uh, a rapid growth, right, uh, into a, a truly a global powerhouse. Uh, that's uh, to be in an organization like that is, is quite unique because you see how uh, business grows and when, when you have the right people and, and right culture, uh, how just quickly things can can grow. Uh, I think that, that was a very good experience for me, right? Because again, at the end of the day, even when you're investing in startups, you want to replicate uh, the, the, how, how you know, companies can grow. Uh, at the same time, I mean, big company have you know, very rigid structure, right? Uh, there's good side and bad side of that, of course. But uh, big companies are structured for a reason because you're just in order to manage a big organization that's sometimes what's needed. Uh, uh, so so you, you, you have to try as, right? Uh, the, what happens at Samsung doesn't apply, uh, not everything applies to a startup. So you have to think, well, these things could be helpful, right? To implement, these things wouldn't. And, and so, but at the, as an investor, you're just making recommendations, right? That you say, uh, I mean, I sat on boards of many, many companies, right? With, with and during board meetings, you have all sorts of discussions about uh, things that are happening at your portfolio company. and. Uh, but based on, on, on my experience, I just make recommendation on what think what I think could work. So, yeah, and we'll go on, back on the board. Mm -hmm. One thing I want to touch on is you mentioned you saw the corporate VC, mm -hmm. and it took you a few years to get into it. You tried yeah, multiple yeah, times. Yeah. In the audience, we have a lot of people who probably want to go into the CVC of the company, yeah, yeah. and they're trying. Uh -huh. Can you talk about what you did? to ultimately give you the chance to get in? What, yeah. what was the pass? Yeah, the, again, I mean, it's just the interaction that I had, right? For, for a few years, I had the interaction with the... So again, they would come to me with, uh, with the deals, right? Uh, I would participate in, in, in technical diligence with them. Uh, they saw how I ask, you know, questions that are, you know, again, leveraging my technology background that are very, you know, uh, 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 you know, very pointed and, and insightful on the on the technology side, they they saw that value, right? And then uh, and then as I I, I work with them, uh, uh, um, you know, I also gained some business knowledge, and 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 so at the end of the day, the head of the the venture team saw, thought, wow, you know, he he works very well with the team. He provides you know a good and also differentiated insight that uh, could could help the team. So that's uh, uh, that's how it happened, actually. Uh, this is also a similar story with the, I, I told you I have a, a PhD in in, uh, in our team. Uh, I actually recruited him out of uh, uh, a, a tech scouting organization called uh, Technology Center America. He used to work there, uh, uh, and 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 he was again bringing us us deals and 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 but also uh, you know participating in due diligence and have you know multiple discussion wow. with the team. And I saw. And again, I saw a reflection of myself many years back, and I thought, okay, well, you know, I said. Why don't you come join us? And 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 and, and he was eager to, and, and he's already contributing a lot. So, uh, so I, yeah, I mean, the short answer is a lot of things happen when when you increase interaction with them. They they see the kind of work you can do. Uh, it's a lot easier to make that decision and 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 just do that leap of faith and and hire somebody who you think might be a little bit different from what you're looking for, right? So, uh, I think it's a golden nugget, which is. Number of interactions, but also you mentioned contributions. Yeah, people yeah. you can see already being part of your team, but mm -hmm. not in your team. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, that just goes a long way in life in general, right? Uh, doing things that are out of your job description that might be helpful for others, right? I mean, even as an investor, right? I mean, you invest in uh, your portfolio. You don't. I mean, some people just do whatever, just manage a portfolio. That's it. But there are a lot of little things here and there that you can do to help them that that is doesn't reflect on your KPI at the end of the year, 
but you you do that through the years and, and people appreciate that they remember it uh and 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 then it all comes back to you it's just uh i, I always experience that it's, uh, it's good karma mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep oh, so yeah. Let's talk about LG Technology Ventures, mm -hmm. which you started. There was no yeah. CVC before uh -huh. you started uh -huh. it. Was it similar where you were involved with the corporate venturing people mm -hmm. and then you start being trusted? And how, yeah. tell us about the journey on. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah. So again, I, I did again quite well at, at Samsung Ventures, right? I gradually moved my way up. So I was doing deals at first, right? And then being an investment professional, but. Uh, uh, but eventually I was managing uh, four different offices, actually, one in Menlo Park, one in Boston, uh, London, and, and Tel Aviv. So, uh, so and, and at that time when I was there, 70% of uh, uh, Samsung Ventures investment came out of those four offices. So I was I had a very secure and good position, uh, uh, and, uh, and I really enjoyed what I was doing. Uh, and then what happened was uh, LG at that time didn't have a, a, a dedicated corporate venture capital team. They were just investing uh, out of the balance sheet of each companies. Uh, and then again, it's a, it's a, uh, at least from my experience, that's a model that is very difficult uh, for various reasons. I can get into it later why. Oh, we will, we yeah. will. Yeah, we will. Uh, so uh, at the LG group, actually the, it was the current chairman who at that time he wasn't chairman, but he, he proposed that Hey, LG should have a, uh, a dedicated corporate venture capital team similar to Samsung and Intel and, and others. Uh, and so they uh, started a, uh, a task force team uh, uh, who did a lot of, they did their homework. I mean, LG really did their homework. They went around, interviewed a lot of people on how to structure it. And, and if you were to run it, then who would be the right person and, and, and all that. And, and I was very, uh, I'm very grateful and, and fortunate that a lot of people said, hey, Dong Su would be a great person to run, uh, set it up and, and run it. Uh, 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 so they they really, uh, they had multiple candidates, but they really wanted me. So uh, so LG came, uh, hired a, a recruiter to, uh, again, I mean, it's very difficult for them to reach out to me directly. So yeah. hired a recruiter who, 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 who talked to me. And then after... Uh, uh, one single interview, they said, <laughs> "We want to hire you." So, uh, so that's how it came up. But at the end of the day, it's again the, the reputation that you build and and then the relationship and, and the network, right? That really uh, comes to you in 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 ways that you never expected. Very nice. So it's clear they wanted you, mm -hmm. but why did you choose to do the move? Clearly, it's yeah. a good yeah. role, but there are yeah. so many things that you need to watch out that could make the role really sure. bad. So yeah, yeah, it's you know. So again, I gave a lot of thought, right? And uh, but there was certain excitement about coming in and, and starting something from scratch yeah. at a structure that I think it makes sense, and also hire the people that that I like. Uh, uh, so it's it's really uh, 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 and and in life you don't have many opportunities like that. I mean, in most of course, if you're starting a, building a startup, then that's one way to do it. But in most cases, you you join an organization that already exists with its own system and structure and and, and people and uh, uh, and then that's also good. You learn a lot from those people. But uh, once you get into a certain stage of your career, you now want to build your own thing, right? Uh, yeah. So that's that is a really a, 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 an opportunity that uh, that I really didn't want to miss in my life. So I that's why I. Made that huge jump. I mean, and uh, and and yeah, and started uh, LG Tech Ventures. So tell us about your first year, mm -hmm. building the team, building the process, building the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, the first day of work, I show up. It was just myself and my admin, just <laughs> <laughs> two of us. All right. Uh, fortunately, I did negotiate what kind of structure I wanted before joining. So I wanted a, a dedicated fund structure, right? Not out of the balance sheet uh, uh, and, uh, and, 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 and all that. And, and of course, the, the, the LG also consulted uh, external lawyers to structure how uh, it needs to be structured. And then I agreed to that. So that was in place. The, the difficult part once after joining was, was building the team. So, uh, First thing I did was reach out to people, uh, to my network, people that I co-invested in the past who I knew yeah. that 
they were kind of looking for a new opportunity or, or, or frustrated with their current job in uh, right uh, so I, I reached out to them and 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 and, and talked to them convinced them and, and 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 that's how I recruit my managing directors for example right it's just all people that I I, I knew so it was a, a, a bit easy decision for me right because I went out after people I I, I, I knew and I liked uh, so that became the core team and then built uh, everything else around it so that's uh, again it's is is I guess I'm saying it again and again but it's the is the is the is the network that built that that really helps you uh, uh, just over the years in one way or the other. Yeah. And it's really over the years. It's yeah. people that you see acting well mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. Being genuine or not. Really wanting yeah. to help entrepreneurs yeah. or not. Yeah. 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 Yep. 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 And and again, I mean, one thing I I also made sure is I I I also hired people who shared my same, same values. Right. People exactly. Who, who want to be a, a good people in general, not somebody who's overly aggressive or who who have no respect for others. Especially, I mean, you have to have a lot of respect for the entrepreneurs. I mean, they are the doing all the heavy lifting. So, uh, so you know, that's uh, and and that kind of determined our culture. And and then people who hired afterwards, they just molded into that uh, that, that 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 culture. Uh, so I think we share that one criteria for investment, which is we're looking for good, genuine, kind people. Yeah, I exactly. Think that that yeah. really matters. If you look back at your first three, four people that, that you brought in, uh, apart from being kind, mm -hmm. what would be the other attribute you were watching at? Clearly, yeah. you knew them over the years, but yeah. what is the one attribute that you thought, I'm not going to compromise on? Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so again, the good people is one thing that I wouldn't compromise. Obviously, uh, some technology competence is very important, right? I mean, uh, yep. uh, and, and it's not, I mean, having a lot of insight into details is important, but this is uh, more, you need a good feel for things, right? I mean, uh, uh, some technology looks very good on paper, right? But it's very hard to uh, do and, uh, and, 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 and they fail. So the companies, those companies fail. So again, uh, it's having a good, a uh, balanced feel for things and it's similar with business too right i mean you can look at you know financials and 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 projections all day long but unless you have a good feel for you know whether this makes sense or not it's uh, so so i think uh, uh, having a, a good balanced perspective is is, is very important very nice yeah and just to give us a feel how big is your team today right now we have uh, 20 people 20 uh yeah and, and how would you tell the audience about how you size your team? I mean, you could be 10 people, you could be 30 people. Yeah, yeah. What's the kind of metrics you think about for growing your team a certain size? Yeah, yeah. So the way we are structured right now is you know, I have uh, five investment professionals. Uh, we have so three managing directors, two principals. We just hired two more principals that's going to be joining uh, in February. So that's the investment team. Very nice. But because we are the corporate venture capital team, and as, as we all know, we have to have a very strong business development team to support them because they are the one who makes that link between the corporate and and the and the investment team, right? Yeah. So uh, so we have uh, five people on the on the on the. Uh, I, I took that the language from a GCB, uh, so the corporate uh, venture business development. Oh, the CVBD. Yeah, CVBD team. So I have uh, I have uh, I have uh, five people there. Six people actually with that, and then the rest is, uh, yeah, yeah, the back office, which is you know, you know, accounting and and controller and, and CFO uh, uh, roles. So, yeah, so okay. that's how we're structured. Yeah, so I think uh, it's uh, uh, I would probably uh, uh, hire, you know grow the investment team a bit more. I think the good uh, good mix is probably a half investment team, quarter business development, quarter back office, but. Uh, but you know, you should have some flexibility also, right? So, yeah. And I guess it depends as your portfolio companies grow and you start to have more mature companies in your portfolio. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Because uh, the investment team at first, if you're just doing deals, then they can do easily four or five deals. But once you have more and more portfolio to manage, then then they cannot do as many deals as, as you know. So, uh, because you do have to spend quite a bit of time and resources in, in, in working with your portfolio companies. So. Uh, so yeah, so you, you do need to constantly increase the, the investment team. Very nice. 
What would be the KPI or what is the KPI you place on the business development team? Because mm -hmm. clearly this is a moving target. As yeah, you start yeah. to mature, then you can be more and more ambitious for the business and business yeah. development team. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, before talking KPIs, I think uh, business development team has multiple roles, right? Business development, of course, is one role. Another role they have is, uh, is uh, you know, this uh, managing our our RLPs, right? The, the business units understand what uh, their strategy and and which areas to invest, uh, uh, because unless we understand what the people in Korea want, it's hard to you cannot you know send them the right deal. So that's another yep. role they have, and the uh, uh, and the third uh, role they have is is just generating more intelligence, uh, market intelligence, right? Uh, uh, because you know, any corporate venture capital team, they expect you to bring that some of that Silicon Valley insight uh, to the corporate, right? And and the investment team guys, of course, they have a lot of insight and all that, but that's not what they like doing because they are more of investors. So, so that's uh, that's uh, uh, that's what CVBD team does. Those three roles, uh, and and uh, uh, so their KPI reflects some of them, right? They have certain uh, uh, they have to write certain inside reports, right? Yep. Uh, they uh, are expected to create um, some business relationship between our portfolio and 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 the headquarters. It could be either joint development or some you know um, supply deal or, or MOU or whatever, right? But they yep. some they're expected to create some some output like that. Uh, uh, and and yeah, and other than that, it's all qualitative, uh, quanti qualitative, right? I mean, yep. how 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 they're doing uh, their job as a uh, as a business, yeah. As a CVBD team, yeah, very nice. And do they are they all based in Silicon Valley, or do yeah. you spread them around? Oh, yeah. So that's one thing I I, uh, I consciously did was to put the headquarter here in Silicon Valley and have everybody come here. Uh, uh, I I mean I've different companies have different structure. I mean Samsung, the Samsung Ventures, the headquarters in Korea, and most of the business development function is done by people in Korea. Only the investment team is uh, is uh, is in Silicon Valley, for example, right? Uh, there are positive and negative sides of, uh, of both structure, right? But I really felt like uh, having a, a very good interaction between the business development team and the investment team is very important because, uh, uh, because of multiple reasons, right? I mean, because they come from different backgrounds, right? Uh, so unless they're together, uh, and talk interacting daily, it's really hard to bridge the gap. I mean, the guy in Korea who, who lived in Korea all, all uh, their life, even the, though they might be interested in, in, in venture capital and, 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 and startup and Silicon Valley culture, it's hard for them to understand uh, what goes on here. And so that's why, uh, uh, yeah, so I made that decision that everybody should be located here. Uh, and, um, but we are, you know, we, we are considering opening up other offices, right? I mean, obviously, uh, by being here, we have good coverage of the U.S., but eventually we will need to consider opening up an office in Israel and and in Europe, for example, right? But, yeah, uh, yeah. Hmm. We we have two offices: one in uh, San Jose, one in Boston. Uh -huh. We're yeah. just going to open one in uh, Bangalore. So Bangalore, it okay. Is, uh, it, it's something you want to take your time to make decisions. You want uh -huh. to be really, in, yeah. You know, so let's move on the balance sheet topic. And yeah. here, actually, I want to tell the audience, you have to be very careful when you talk about this. Because mm -hmm. many people will say, we invest off the balance sheet. Yeah. But actually, verbally, they mean maybe something different than if they were writing it. Because some people mm -hmm. mean OFF, which means away from the balance sheet. Some <laughs> okay. people mean OF, which means in the balance sheet. OK, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So clearly, we, we know this is an extremely important topic. Yes, you negotiated yes. that upfront before you 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 joined LG. Yeah. Why is it so important to be able to invest away from the balance sheet? Yeah. From the balance yeah. sheet. Yeah. So there are multiple reasons, right? But uh, one is uh, if you're investing uh, out of your the balance sheet, right? Uh, the decision making you have uh, a process you have to follow the corporate process right i mean because they, they whenever you, you know you're spending cash there's yep. every corporation have certain decision making process which 
is quite involved in most cases, especially bigger companies have, have you have to go through, you know, multiple, you know, gates and, 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 uh, uh, and a lot of times the CFO is involved and, or, or, or CTO or CEO and, and they, they are, they are, you know, obviously they are very good people, but they don't always understand the venture capital business and, and, and also the need for, uh, for a lot of uncertainty when you're making a decision and also the speed uh, that is needed to make the decision. So, uh, so, so again, going through that corporate decision-making process is just very slow. It just takes a long time. And, and, and at the process, you, you, uh, you, you know, you pick a bad reputation as being hard to work with and slow. Uh, a lot of deals uh, gets dropped also in the process and, and, and all that. So that, that's uh, one uh, reason why it's bad. Uh, second of all, uh, when you're investing out of the balance sheet, uh, financial uh, return is not as important, right? I mean, as CTO would say, I, he doesn't probably doesn't care about whether little, you know, couple mil, two, two million dollar investment returns money or not. He's more interested in what kind of technology we'll get out of this company, right? Uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so when that happens, then uh, there are a couple of things that can go wrong. One is your interest is not aligned with other investors' interests. So everybody else on the table wants the company to succeed and help them succeed. You're just thinking what can our corporate can get out of the yeah. investment, which uh, again, creates tension, right? Uh, also the investment professional, because they, uh, they are not, you know, incentivized for the financial return. So they, they are not looking for the best deals uh, that uh, they are just looking for deals, companies that, that are willing to work with your corporate, uh, which translates to just making bad investments and losing money. So uh, yep, you're not looking for the winners. Yeah, you're not looking for the winners. You're just looking for, yeah, uh, yeah, again. So, uh, so, so that's, uh, uh, that's another reason why I think uh, uh, um, just having a dedicated fund is, is very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's all about working with other VCs and CVCs, mm -hmm. but more importantly, the financial VCs. They yeah. want to know that you have aligned interest as yeah, much yeah, as possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and okay, and, and the third reason is uh, if you're investing out of the balance sheet, it becomes very hard to do follow an investment. Exactly. Because if you have a fund, then you know you have to continue to support the companies, you can get returned. But uh, if investing out of balance sheet, they, you know, it's like they say, we already got the strategic benefit out of the, our initial investment. Why should we invest again? And, 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 and it just becomes very hard to justify, right? To follow. So that's, yeah, yeah. And so when you, you build your fund, mm -hmm. did you allocate upfront a reserve, which would be for follow on investments, or did you keep that flexible? Uh, we kept it flexible. We don't have a rigid reserve. Actually, uh, the way we're structured is, uh, uh, we have multiple funds. Actually, it's a single LP fund. Right. Uh, so there is no issue with uh, investing in the follow on with the subsequent funds. I see. Uh, so so that's why we decided, yeah, then probably we don't have to do a reserve. But but again, there was a clear understanding that we will uh, invest and follow on based on uh, on 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 more on the financial right uh, perspective rather than strategic perspective. So uh, that was going to be my next question, which mm -hmm. is what is your strategy for follow? Is it purely financial on the expected outcome, mm -hmm. or there's still some element of strategic synergy? Mm -hmm. So, uh, if a company looks good financially but not exceptional, but there's mm -hmm. a lot of engagement and excitement yeah. in energy, yeah. then you're more yeah. likely to follow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, in principle, it's uh, all financial decision, but in practice, I mean, you have to keep your LPs happy, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> So let's say a company is not doing too well, right? And probably is, we shouldn't invest, but if they're already working strategically well with, uh, right, uh, with, uh, with, the, with, with, the, with our R&D center, for example, then, then you kind of want to support them because otherwise people get upset and that's yep. never a good yep. thing, right? Uh, uh, and the other way around is, is also possible. You think this financially is very important, but somehow the company got into a bad relationship with corporate and it just doesn't look good. Right, so uh, so yeah. there's a little bit of, of balancing act, but 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 in terms of just principle, yeah, I mean, financially should be the, the main decision uh, making uh, driver. 
Very nice. So we touched about balance sheet, but also another topic is reporting line. Yeah. What do you think about reporting line and what would be your advice to everyone listening in? Yeah. You know, the best is when the head of the CVC reports to the very top. Uh, 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 because you get a more complete perspective. Let's say if you're looking, if you're reporting just to the CTO, then CTO will say, technology, 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 what technology are you bringing, right? Yep. If you, and, and, and if you're reporting to a CFO, uh, they, all they think is, wow, you're going to lose my money, <laughs> you know, money right? <laughs> or not, right? Uh, it just makes very, very difficult. Uh, uh, you, you want to be report to the CEO. Uh, in, in my case, I, I report uh, directly to the, to the LG Corp, which is the holding company of the entire LG group. So they have a very long-term and, 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 and more holistic view. Of, That's good. Yeah, how they want things to be done. So, uh, 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 and, and it makes a world of difference. And, and also because they know I, I, I you know, work with the, the, that, uh, the holding company and, and, this, and I do report to the chairman, you know, periodically, uh, <laughs> they listen to me a bit more than, than other CBCs because our business units, right? Because, because of that. So I think- yep. Top-down support is very important uh, for the success of a CVC team, uh, and, uh, and 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 yeah, as I said, higher higher you go up, uh, the better it is. Many people comment that a CVC is only a CVC mm -hmm. if it has survived the change of CEO. Yeah, what's your view? There's definitely some of that. Uh, uh, again. Um, uh, Every CEO, especially the incoming CEO, if somebody new, he doesn't understand what the role of the CVC is, and it creates a lot of tension. And 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 by the time you 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 finally educate a new person, and 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 he's now fully understands the value of CVC, then he might be replaced again. So that's uh, 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 that can make things really hard. I think what allows you to survive through the changes is basically uh, building a solid track record. Yeah. So if you have, you know, showed financial gain, then that just checks the box. Okay, you're making money. You're not losing money, right? Yep. Uh, uh, and then if you have a few, not every deal that you make will result in some strategic value, but if you have some cases where you can show show for, right, that, uh, that wow, you know, we invested in this company and they did this and this with our business units, right? Uh, if you have those two things, uh, uh, those two track records, uh, then it, the discussion becomes a lot easier because uh, because at the end of the day, they see uh, less risk with what you do because you're not losing money, right? And and you're creating some value. So uh, so the argument becomes a lot easier. If you don't have that, then always concerned, wow, you guys are investing money and I'm not seeing any return and I yeah, have no idea yeah, when yeah. the returns will be again. Right? Actually, so, if anything, if they are not going to say you're investing money, they will start saying you're spending money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's huge difference between those two, as, as we all know. Uh, but fortunately for me, for LG, because uh, uh, of the how LG is governed by the, by the chairman's office, right, which is... You know, it's actually our current chairman is 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 quite young. He's he's, he's forty, so he's gonna probably run the, the LG Group for another thirty years, which provides a very good continuity for for many many years to come. So so that's uh, that's another aspect that that is quite fortunate for for what, what I'm. I, I think it's actually very special, and yeah. he can have a long term view because he knows yeah. he's going to be there for the next thirty years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I want to talk about two things. One is. Uh, value add to the mothership and you just yeah. touch a little bit yeah. about showing the, the learning mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on and then the value to entrepreneurs afterwards yeah how do you visualize how do you make it very tangible that you're bringing strategic learnings insights back yeah. to the mothership and how, yeah. how why do you do it yeah yeah so there are multiple things that the mothership wants out of cvc right um and some things you can you can provide sooner than 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 later. So uh, again, I, I already mentioned you know that Silicon Valley insight that they're looking for is it's really important to communicate that. So uh, as you go out and meet other VCs and entrepreneurs, there are certain things that you learn that is not on the newspapers or or, or that right. So those 
I mean, if you relay those information, that's, that's appreciated and, and, and they do see the value in that. And that's something that you can do from, you know, day one, right? Uh, obviously, the other value, which is hard to show, is, is, is try to show value from your portfolio companies. Mm. Uh, that takes quite a bit of time, right? Uh, you invest in company, uh, you know, and, and sometimes the direction of the company pivots or something is different from what you're looking for and all that. You really have to manage expectations very well. You, you have to let them know, look, I mean, this is a venture business, right? I mean, for example, financially, every not every deal that we invest is going to make money. I mean, most of them actually will fail, but those who do will provide a lot of, you will cover up, you will cover you, all the losses and, and your fund will make money. Same thing with strategic uh, benefit. Not every company that we invest may end up with strategic benefit, but, you know, if we can, you know, come up with a few that, that, you know, does end up in, in, you know, in a very uh, synergistic relationship with the mothership, then that's right. A, a big plus. And, and the impact is, is, is very big. Right. So, uh, uh, so that's, uh, you have to set that expectation with the people in that case, you're not scrutinized for every deal. It's like, what, what happened with this, right. That you don't want to get into that. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, uh, so I think those, yeah, I mean, that's how I, I, I you know, when I'm just, you know, having this, this kind of conversation with, with mothership, that's what I always stress. And that's also probably why you said a quarter of your team being the CVBD yeah, really yeah. is important. Of course, of course. Yeah. Uh, again, I can't stress enough. You do have need a dedicated CVBD team uh, because, I mean, you good if you hire good investment professionals, they don't want to. They they that's their passion. They want to do investment. They don't want to spend a lot of time communicating with headquarters and and convincing them all that. Uh, when CVVD team does that, I mean, uh, that just makes the investment profession focus on what they do best, which is investment. So, so it's it's very important, and 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 you do need uh, a very regular uh, conversation with people. At mothership, that's 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 you can't stress enough uh, 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 because again, it's, it's in many cases it's very hard for them to understand what you're doing out here uh, in yep. Silicon Valley, right? So so it's just communication is very important. I I try to encourage my CVBD team to get in, uh, you know, every at least uh, every every other week to have uh, video calls with with people in Korea. Of course, there's daily email and and phone interactions, but but it's not the also, same. Yeah, it's not the same. You have to have some structured cadence in terms yeah. of uh, communicating with them. So let me put a little test on yeah. what you just described. Between, do, do you require some kind of immediate synergy with a company you plan to invest? And mm -hmm. by immediate, I don't mean on day two, but yeah. within a few months, you know it's going to have synergy with a uh -huh. synergy. Uh -huh. Or sometimes you make the bet that it's not going to be now, but I expect in two, three years yeah, yeah. it will bring value. Yeah, yeah. I mean, realistically, you need to do both. Uh, uh, so you do need you know, a few companies that start working with, you know, the mothership, uh, you know, relatively soon because that's what people are looking for, right? But if you're just doing just those kind of deals, then you're going to miss out in some of the bigger, you know, future opportunities. So. Yeah. So, so you, you do need that balance. And, and sometimes, you know, people at, uh, at, at, at headquarters might not see the value, but you have to be able to tell them, look, this is uh, for the long term, this is a, a good bet. This is what's hot in Silicon Valley these days. So just, just trust us. And, 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 and hopefully, you know, uh, a few years down the road, you'll see the value of, of this company, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, so you need both. That's the short answer. <laughs> no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. and, and talking of that, when you make decisions, I'm assuming you don't need a business group champion as a mm -hmm. consequence because you can tell them we don't need to. Mm -hmm. But is all the investment committee you and your core team or do you have people from LG that also yeah. are part of the investment committee? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, investment committee is all my team, you know, all in Silicon Valley. It's my, it's my managing director for myself. Uh, but for strategic deals, we do uh, ask for uh, the, the business unit's consent, saying that, yes, this is a, uh, a technology area that, that we are interested in and, 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 and we can't, uh, you know, imagine working with this company in the future, right? Or something like that, because we are, we are investment, investment team, right? We understand what's a good investment. 
they understand why it's a good strategic value, right? It's not us deciding, yep, this, yep. right? So, so we do need that 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 endorsement uh, for strategic deals. But on the other hand, for more longer term uh, benefit investments, uh, we uh, we work with the with the with the holding company uh, strategy team, and they're very flexible. They they allow us to do all sorts of deals, right? Uh, because again, they 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 want to explore, they want to learn things. So. Uh, so, so we have that uh, uh, pocket of money that, that is uh, very, very helpful for us. The, like, the way I like to describe it is we should act as if we need the approval of the business group, uh -huh. but uh -huh. we shouldn't need one, yeah. but we act like if we did. Yeah. And this yes. way you create the right intimacy. Exactly. And... Yep. Yep. As I said, I mean, you always have to keep your LPs happy. That's uh, <laughs> no matter what business you're in, uh, whether uh, they have this, you know, decision-making power or not. You just have to work with them, right? So. Now let's talk about the most important stakeholder and how you add value to them, which is the entrepreneurs you bet on. Yeah, yeah. How do you construct value add to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, obviously, the most low-hanging fruit is try to help them uh, get engaged with with people within LG, right? Uh, in in a win-win type of relationship, right? Uh, uh, and, and a lot of companies do uh, expect that from us. And then and, and that's also some many cases, part of the reason why they decide to take our money. Uh, uh, so again, that's what, what the, the role of the business development team does. And, and, uh, and, uh, and, and that's very important, right? But uh, also, you know, there are all these little things here and there that, that people don't, don't uh, don't expect that, that uh, the help that you can provide. I mean, just because I've been doing this for long enough, then you know there are other investors that we could introduce to the company, and uh, and when they need to hire somebody, I might know somebody who you know can fill that position, and uh, and uh, and you know just a lot of times general advice is always also very appreciated, especially in terms of uh, working with. Big companies, right? Not just LG. I mean, I've you know, a lot, I have portfolio companies who worked with both LG, Samsung, or all, all our competitors, right? And and that happens. That's said, but you have to be supportive of that. You gotta exactly. just because we invest, you can't tell them, "Oh, don't work with our competitors," right? And that's just not a model that works. Uh, and the company is not gonna succeed, and also you, that's gonna damage your reputation. So, oh, you, your reputation you, would be gone so fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you tell them, look, I mean. I think big companies, right? I mean, it's things like this, you know, if, so if you're going to talk to Samsung, maybe you want to, you know, approach it this way or whatever, right? And, and provide, or how, if you have multiple companies, uh, multiple customers that they are dealing with and you tell them, oh, look, I mean, you want to uh, create this kind of uh, tension between your, your, your partners, competitive tension, right? That, that will get a lot of their attention Right. Uh, uh, so, for example, right, I told I, I tell them straightforward, like, don't just work with LG. Right. I mean, talk, talk with multiple people, because that in that way, you will also get more attention from LG because they know you're talking to multiple people. So, so advice like that. Right. It's always appreciated. So. Yeah. In a way, many of what you described as value add is mm -hmm. what a very good financial VC would yeah. bring. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yep. Another area you've mentioned earlier, but I think it's true also here, is the value you bring as a board member. Mm -hmm. Can you talk us through the value you bring and whether it's different, whether you're an observer or a full board member? There is a quite a bit of difference between observer and a full member. Of course, observer can also contribute a lot to the company, right? Uh, but uh, if you're a board member, you have to... Uh, make decisions in a lot of different things, right? Like, you know, style options or, yep. or, or, uh, or, you know, uh, next round of financing, when to do it, how big to do, you know, all that. Right. And, and you're constantly talking about, uh, those kind of things that uh, normally, you know, board observers wouldn't participate in, in those kind of discussions. Right. So, uh, so, um, so as a corporate venture capital, in most cases, I feel observers enough. I mean, you really don't need a board seat unless you are experienced, at least, at least uh, a board member, or at least uh, be able to make, you know, decision on those kind of things that that uh, that normally an observer wouldn't. Yep. Uh, so, uh, but and 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 in most cases, board director just 
helping the company. You're not, not you know, because that's what you should. You have the fiduciary duty. So, so you're not doing uh, much. You're not providing much benefit to the mothership by being a board director, full director versus an observer. But this is more to just help the portfolio a bit more. That's I actually I could argue it. that you're more likely to be able to help the mothership if you're an observer mm -hmm. than if you're a full board member, where yeah. at that point you're... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's uh, more of a... Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. So we are getting to the top of the hour, and I mm -hmm. really want you to share what you think LG Technology Ventures wants to invest next. What are you excited about the next years? So I think the biggest impact for LG Group as a whole is, is the electrification of the automobile, right? Uh, LG Energy Solution uh, is, is, a, you know, is a top two manufacturer of lithium ion batteries in the world. And if you take out, if you, you know, outside China, they're number one. And, 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 and probably most auto OEMs are, are working with LG. So again, it's, it's, a, and it's a huge market and it's going to be even bigger uh with a lot of impact and it's not just batteries right i mean there's now you know the whole ecosystem around it is just going to be transformed everything from materials to, to cell manufacturing to battery management to to electric motors and safety and 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 inf informatics and and all that so, so there is a lot of interesting things to uh, to look at, uh, and we've been quite active on that sector, and we are constantly looking at the uh, investment uh, on on everything that has to do with the electrification of, of mobility. Uh, I think second area that that I started to look more uh, starting last year is things around metaverse. I mean, it's a very overused terms and uh, term, and everybody doesn't have a good grasp of, of what really metaverse is or how it'll become. Mm -hmm. But but I, I do uh, see that it's going to be a big part of how people uh, spend their time, right? I mean, uh, obviously gaming transformed how people spend their time. I mean, if you look at my, my, my son, he spends most of his, you know, free time playing games and, and, and that's a huge impact, right? Uh, uh, I think metaverse will become a, a big part of how people spend their time uh, which creates a lot of opportunities in terms of marketing uh, and social network uh, even maybe even tourism right uh, instead of going before going to paris you might want to you know yeah, enjoy check it out yeah check it out in the metaverse right a, a replication of, of of a city right for example right so so i i do see that coming eventually it's gonna it's going to take a bit longer than people realize. I mean, people's habits don't change quickly, uh, but I, I do see that becoming a part of part of life. And, and so I'm uh, so again, we invest in in companies like Sandbox, and also investing in a bunch of uh, content creation companies in the metaverse, like Wave and and Amaze VR and so forth. So that's uh, an area that I think is worth looking. And at. there is no doubt that startups will be the ones that create these innovations in uh, yeah. Yeah. new. Business yeah. model yeah. and yeah. use yep. case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Especially metaverse, I, I, uh, I expect to be a lot more decentralized. A lot of exciting uh, content and and things like that will be created by startups. Uh, yeah. yeah. All, unlike you know other social networking platforms so far, like Facebook, which is very right, controlled by a few companies. Metaverse, I expect to be a bit different. Very nice. And so. For the entrepreneurs that are working in electrification, mm. metaverse, all the topics you're interested, what type of check size and early oh. stage, late stage yeah, yeah, yeah. you can expect from you? Yeah. Yeah. So because our fund is pretty big, right? I mean, we manage four hundred fifty million dollars, so we tend to look a bit later stage, right? I mean, uh, uh, one to ten million dollar checks is uh, our typical investment, uh, Series A or later. Uh, you know, of course, there are exceptions, right? I mean, if we see an exceptional company at a C stage, then we might invest, you know, uh, and write a smaller check. But but normally, yeah, we like to see a, a bit um, a bit uh, bigger and, and, and Series A or, or later stage companies. Yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Donsu, thank you for your time. This was mm -hmm. really nice for you to okay. share your mm -hmm. journey and your best practices and your mm -hmm. learnings along the way. Thank you. Yeah, I re really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for the opportunity. It was an honor. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye.